Okay, I'm gonna you know, call the Finance Committee meeting to order for January 18th, 2023. Um, uh, members present are uh, Mr. Bodkins and Ms. Alt, Tom Fellner. Um, if there are no uh, additions or corrections, I'd like a motion to accept the minutes from the December 21st regular meeting. I'll make a motion. Mr. Bodkins makes a motion. I'll second. Ms. Alt seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, before you, you have the agenda. Um, if there are no changes, I'd like a motion to approve the agenda as presented. I'll make a motion to approve the agenda as presented. Ms. Alt makes the motion. Uh, Mr. Bodkin seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, motion carries. Uh, the first discussion item is um, Ordinance 2023-9 uh, regarding State Route 61. So we're going to lateral it to the mayor. Hmm. Mm. Is this the air or Ms. No. no. Well, go ahead. Nick. All right. You can pass Ward. The yeah, I'm going to lateral session. it. Yeah. Thank you. Yep. Um, Back in. I don't know, was it November, December, you passed the preliminary legislation. Oh. Now we just have to pass the final. This is from um, Harding Way, Northeast Street, north to Charles, and then Charles Street, all the way out toward the airport, the urban leaving project. Um, so the city's quotient is $376,000. It's in the budget. And we need to have this thing, our final legislation by February 1st. Okay. So, Thank you. Yes. That is thank you. Uh, <laughs> this goes uh, so it's sixty one toward uh, the overpass. I mean, down Charles and yeah. yeah. So up East Street, right, and then hanging right on Charles Street okay. and going straight up all the way to the airport. To the airport. Okay. Yeah, Circle so K not, is where I think it actually down. starts. Yeah. It's Circle K or Cubbies okay. up there, and yeah. then and then that same route you're describing. Yeah, Charles has gotten pretty rough, so uh, that'll be a relief. The worst, other worst section of that is the is out by the airport where it goes in and out of the city limits. Okay. So, but so yeah, that, said, that's. So you said our portion was three hundred and seventy-six thousand. What's the other portion? Yeah. Um, I don't. I don't. The original. We'll, we'll get it for you. This part of the brought to us by ODOT was five hundred. So this, I was surprised that it came down. Significant events. Yeah, I, I don't think really we'll find that out. Any other questions? Um, if there are no other questions or comments, I would like a motion to move ordinance 2023 9 uh, onto full council for Tuesday. I'll make that motion to add ordinance 2023-9 onto the council. Um, Ms. Alt makes the motion. Mr. Bodkin seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Uh, second um, piece of legislation, excuse me, discussion item B, um, ARPA procurement policy ordinance 2023-10. I'll jump in on this one. I'm a little more prepared on this one. I think Thomas has uh, uh, produced this for us. And it, where what it is needed for is in order to do, um, I'm going to use the wrong word, but it's what, a subcontracting of the county's ARPA dollars in order to be able to do that. Uh, we need this procurement policy that we're going to procure the consultant, we're going to procure the contractor consistent with ARPA rules. So uh, I don't think it represents much of a change in how we'll see projects developed. It'll have more to do with our ability then to work with the county to get um, their funding. So I'm not sure if that's... Thomas, can you think of other anything? Well, in so what you know, uh, what we did, what the city of Bucyrus has already gone through this. Mm -hmm. uh, they actually created this document, the law director for the city of Bucyrus. Uh, and so what I did, since this had already been approved and it was a working document, I took theirs and 
tweaked it, uh, changed several several things in it, both clerical and then there were some. I, I know this is a public meeting, but I'll say it anyway. There were some substantive errors in it, and um, uh, it's now before you, and it's <clears throat> ready to be adopted. Uh, as the mayor said, it is very similar to the current way we do things. There are some nuances that ARPA throws in, and there's a requirement that's in here that if there's a conflict or a disagreement between the way ARPA wants it and the way the city of Gallion Commission does it, ARPA wins. So that's in there. So you drafted uh, the ordinance, but uh, when you were referring to um, <clears throat> little uh, changes, that was in the contract? Yes, yeah, it's, it's the policy. It's the okay. procurement policy. It's 41 pages, something to read as you're going to bed, put you to sleep. Um, but it is uh, necessary as the mayor shared in order for us to participate in the receipt of our funds from Crawford County. And a lot of the, I mean, the things are uh, standard in government contracts. Um, body requirements, uh, minority-owned, women-owned, small business vendors, you know, uh, equal opportunity, things like that. Um, yes. Okay. Nothing should shock you. It, but it, it, it has been the reason <clears throat> we're, we shuffled around the first phase of Railroad Street. Or we had when we you know you set it up on the sources and uses the the source being the county the use was going to be um, sort of the front first part of the front end of the water plant that isn't really going to work so when you look at what we're what we decided to do is use existing ARPA money our own allocation and a capital improvements fund to. Uh, not hold up the, the repair the, of the clarifier. So we, we really need to get this money in order to do the all these other elements out there. I don't want to go through the, the some of the tanks and the major deficiencies that EPA wants corrected. So anyways, I'm glad to see it moving along and we can now get that in place. Commissioners really wanted it. Have they decided, if you, if we decided, figured out if they're paying the bills, are they giving us the money if we're paying the bills? I think, <clears throat> I think that we are going to be reimbursed after we've expensed it. The best person to answer that question is, a, a, is Annie, can they help me with her last name, who's the commissioner's Clerk. Yeah. I think, I think the answer, the reason for the question yeah. is that if that's the case and they're going to be giving us ARPA funds, we may have to set up a new fund for those and we may not be able to use the existing ARPA yeah. fund. But yeah, I just want to make sure they were in front of that, not behind the. We should get a hold of them. We get this on, up onto the agenda and moving forward and all questions answered. Yeah. We need to get that clear. I can on. clarify yeah. once we find out, but I. Yeah. Setting up a new fund would clarify that. We just make it simple. We're not separating simple, these Simple, okay, pieces. but also legal. <laughs> well, I mean, that's just, I, 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 they no, no, I, I, the, the, what I was going to say, I, I agree with Brian. They were concerned mm -hmm. about how they track the expenditure. So they may need to be a party to the yet to be selected contractor or contractors or vendor or vendors. That's what that Brian's right to point that out, but that's and City McCaffrey was like, we don't have to ask permission because it's federal funds, we can automatically set up the funds. That's not yeah a hook a hole in the in this process. But I just want to make sure that if we're gonna get that and that's where the money if we're gonna get reimbursed that it goes into that and then we can do how it which one track it right? I was mo the, the the biggest hurdle. We had two meetings, I believe, on this. If you were at both of them or either one, Matt and I were over a couple of times. The biggest hurdle was getting this so that the prosecutor was comfortable um, with the request, and then the second one has to do with 
how the auditor, excuse me, how the commissioner's office, their clerk prefers to have it done. So we can do the second hurdle. Uh, Thank you. Anything else? If not, I'd like a motion to move ordinance 2023-10 on full council. I'll make that motion. Mr. Bodkins makes the motion. I'll second. Uh, Ms. Alt seconds. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Um, item C discussion are uh, and changes to the uh, staffing ordinance. What do you have in front of you, guys and gals? Aye. You have the, a new list. Is it itemized? <laughs> yeah, I believe yeah. so. Did I give you one? Yeah, it came in the packet. Yeah, I don't, the, uh, where to start? The, it has been an issue for a couple of years that I can remember. <clears throat> it may be longer than that in some people's minds. Uh, the cost of some of our higher paid employees. Uh, we're not on that ordinance. Not that. That? Oh, no, we're, we're on staffing. Staffing. Yeah, staffing. This is oh. the number. This is the number See. of staff in each department. <clears throat> Excuse me, but I haven't done that in a while, have I done? I'm so anxious to talk about this. No, I think this is Bryant's, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah, I thought so. My I, bad. I kind Excuse of bruised it. Uh, no, no, it's not the really. dreams that I saw, right? It's yeah, it's yeah. Okay, correct. Okay. All right. Excuse me. I'm sorry. It's all right. So it's essentially adding more positions to the auditor's office? Yes, that's the only addition. We had discussed a few months ago about a deputy auditor position. We had preliminary talks about that. Um, I think the original, the 22 ordinance never passed, the 21 ordinance never passed. I was talking to Julie to have the deputy auditor in that position, that it didn't pass. So I just brought it back up again. This I am not sitting here asking you to fill all of these positions. I'm asking you to put them on there and have them available if we make that decision. Uh, deputy auditor uh, creating a crew chief position in the auditor's office and then two administrative clerks. Ultimately, I'd like to have four in the in the office, but I'm not sure when or when when or how we get there. But I will be honest the the biggest thing is is I'm going to push for is the administrative clerk crew chief and try to get that position filled. Um, and then still stay with the one administrative clerk. Uh, I do not have job descriptions in front of me. Nikki is forward to me, the one that we, that we created for the utility office. I just, I haven't had time to, to change that or do that. So if you're concerned that you don't have a job description in front of me, you don't. Um, it'd be pretty simple to put together. Um, but I'm not sure that a job description is needed for this ordinance. You're just creating the positions in there. I will certainly answer any questions or have discussion. So, kind of just a summary. Sorry, Carol. Um, we're creating positions, not necessarily funding them because yeah, I haven't asked to they, fund them because they're, they're not they're not funded. And right, and you don't have people at the time to fill those. So we're this is a. <clears throat> preliminary work to a degree I, I intend if you if, if this passes I intend to push for the, the crew chief position as, as soon as possible I get it. that will have to be some additional funding it currently is not fun our budget is not funded for that um, and you know, while it has to be bid and stuff I would certainly expect that that would be Eunice um, in that position um, in one way or the other, but I, I can't say I mean that's an open bid position. Sure. So that would be a union position. Sorry, Karen. Yeah. Um is is this going to be like the highest number of employees that the auditor's office has had recently if we do adopt this? Is it I guess whenever the and maybe Tom can answer this, either one of them, whenever if you think back to a time when the auditor's office was running well or smooth, is there that number of employees in there, or is this like a new number? I guess, what would adding these positions do in the office? I, can't, I won't answer the second one. The, 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 
the, when Brian Trish first took over, he was he took two fiduciary employees. No, back up. He didn't select two fiduciary employees. He took two uh, bargaining unit members that were that in the previous. If you recall, they were both uh, utility office and accounts payable. The basically took the two most competent bill payers. Uh, and those people went with Brian. So there was the auditor and two staff. That's what that's what there has has been since then. So I guess Brian, what would these two new positions add well, to your office? Again, I'm not asking for them to be hired. I'm I'm putting it in there in the event that we can get there maybe sometime if the need arises. Mm -hmm. um, is the deputy Auditor would be a, I think fiduciary is the right term. It's somebody that would be hired yep. by, by me. It would not be a bargaining unit member, kind of an at will employee. Um, and then, but the crew chief position would be under the the bargaining unit. They asked me union contract. Um, I, I think you do one or the other. Probably not both at this point in time. Um, I mean, so if you. I left the two administrative clerks in there, so maybe you have a crew chief and you bring a second admin clerk in, but a lesser. It's just trying to, to make things run a little bit smoother um, and more efficient. Uh, again, this while these positions may be on the chart, they don't necessarily need to be filled, and I give you the police department as an example. There are two police captains showing on the staffing chart. Okay. You can't and they have been there for a long time, and there was there's certain rules implied that if you if you get rid of those, you have to go through a process and get rid of them. So they just didn't didn't remove the police captains from from the police department, but they've been determined not to be necessary or to be filled at this time. So they're there. You wouldn't have to create them, but you don't have to fill them. This is giving me some, giving us the city some leeway to be able to to staff it. Add an, add an extra employee, if you will, or to put a crew chief in that position, or at some point in time down the road, you don't need a crew chief. I also wonder <coughs> how many employees in other cities our size or with budgets similar to ours have in their auditor's office, if it's a similar number, or what that looks like. Like how many does? I, I have no idea. I, I will a general statement that if you, if you don't use Rita, if the city runs their own income tax office, then you probably see those with uh, one or two more. Okay. But if you talk to the finance person, it's probably know that individual yes. works exclusively on uh, chasing down uh, income tax. And they have Kelly and you so, the, the, I'll go ahead and mention this. The, this position, I mean, you all have to create it, but there's a negotiation with the unions about that. Uh, they'll, they'll have to approve it. It's, they've been. I've, we've, I've been disappointed. I think we've been disappointed. But I'm definitely disappointed with a couple of decisions they made recently. So I, I have no way to predict whether they'll be supportive of that. That was one of the things they agreed to do when the when a crew chief was was uh, elevated, if you will, in the billing office. Is they had to approve that. So. I don't and I got one more if I could real quick. It was only three years ago when through collective bargaining the this applied to all, to almost every uh, woman in the in the in, in city employment. We, all the clerks got moved up a pay range, including the person who's likely to then be elevated from that of the crew chief. So the <clears throat> There has been a bump in compensation for that classification order. So, anyway. Thank you. 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 Thank you.
Debbie? You're, you really need one clerk, really. That's what you're saying. I'm sorry. You really use one person because I can see everything so stacked up. Because I remember one time we were talking, every bit of money we get from somewhere, you guys create another line for it coming. So, I mean, checking all those things. budget for the year, that was scary. <laughs> you know, look at all the pictures and, and all the, it was like one on one. Boom, 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 down two, three pages. <laughs> it doesn't look like me, but would that help you get things done a little more efficiently if, if that person were to come on board? Well, again, I'm not, I'm not, right now I'm not advocating to take us to four people or five people. I'm just, I'm advocating that we have the ability to, to do some, potentially do some or, or bring another person in or keep the staffing at the same level and create crew chief and, I, and keep one administrative clerk. You call a crew chief for you? Is that what you're saying? Someone in your office? Yeah. Okay. It's just it's just the higher you're not the crew chief. No, I'm the auditor. <laughs> yeah. So it would so it would go like auditor, deputy auditor, crew chief, and then administrative clerk, administrative clerk, right? Yeah, we make a big issue out of that, don't we? <laughs> just a big one, but no, I appreciate that, Brian. Thank you. Um, if there are no other questions or comments, I'd like a motion to uh, pass Ordinance 2023-11 on the full council for consideration. Um, Mr. Bodkins makes the motion. I second. Ms. Alt seconds. Uh, all in favor? Aye. Motion carries. Um, we've got six minutes to discuss. Can we get this done? You want to? We can get Do this it. done. Oh, yeah. The the yeah, as easy as as, as so. easy as this group said yes to that last one. Uh, this is uh, this is less of a needle thread. This is the, the only issue I want to bring up is that we have a couple of folks. It's come up the last few years that and, and it's in the most responsible positions. Uh, they're they're piercing through this pay schedule, so there'll be guys in six figures. I think at least two of them, correct? Um, one guy in six figures, and then the fire captain will go through the ceiling on that one. This is not six. Yeah, so there's a couple of people <laughs> pushing up $100,000 for their job. There's one that's gone through. I mean, the last six months, that individual, the, he was essential to um, us getting through in the business side of the police operation, so it'd be the worst time. It's a little bit like what Brian was saying with his person who's done a lot of, of work for us. Um, you know, now's not the time to not reward them with that logic. So, but the, but uh, it's you know you just need to stop and think about it. You're going to have. Um, Almost all of the superintendents be in the mid nine in the mid eighties, excuse me. Lines uh, departments at almost ninety thousand. The two water guys, uh, water and wastewater, they're relatively new. They're mid eighties now. Uh, so I wanted to point that out before we just sort of pass that along. The, there's, I've said for a few years in council before, had some concerns. There's an absolute maximum. You know, you can't just, if one became, let's say, the fire chief at a relatively young age, they're going to end up 150, you know, around 150,000 by the time they retire. We, you know, we had 10,000 people in town. So I'm, I catch myself feeling really old talking and thinking like this, uh, you know. Um, so I, that, that may be know, the cost. I'm sorry. Go I'm, ahead. I'm sorry to interrupt. No. Um, no, th so these are ranges. Yeah. That that, that are proposed and, and not uh, current salaries for those well, most seniors. Uh, well, so so we have to. Yeah. There's it's it's easy to kind of hyperventilate. Right. When you see the max of the range, but knowing that. The, the people aren't there, but we we've got to set those. Right. I mean, we're into uh, the 20, 24 and twenty five. So. Right. 
But so anyways, I'm just, the, there are uh, two of these individuals uh, that are at 89,000, one's at 80, 89, seven. Uh, the, the water and sewer guys have that we gave them the exact same salary, so they're not quite eighty four thousand, ten dollars short of that. The the uh, service director is just shy of eighty two. That's probably of all the you look at the job. That's not fair. It doesn't seem to be fair. Fairness has to do with that. I'm not quite sure. And then I think on this ordinance, there's Matt and Eric in the. The mid eight, the mid fifties, I'm sorry. So that's that's really to kind of it's on the scale, it's the potential to earn that larger number like you were at the beginning to say, Doc, but that's what really what we're talking about. But we kind of need to pass this because you're saying there's gonna be two employees. No, nah, I mean we waited forever yes, but we waited forever a couple years ago and then yes. we and then we did the back pay and then it's like cash flow collision. Oh. So they got caught up all in one. Does anybody remember how late the year was? April 14th. Oh, there's somebody must have been affected. <laughs> clearly. No, I had to look it all up. Oh, okay. It was when I wrote the ordinance. Well, it was, yeah. it, it was um, last bargaining. Yeah, yeah it was. Yeah. So, so I don't know. It's just the, the, oh, it's transparency, man. I just want to be fully transparent. I think. I might say that tongue in cheek, but I think it's it's cost of doing business in the twenty first century. It does make us. If I can jump the track, is it seven thirty yet? No, nope. you don't have a quorum. Uh, oh, you do. You just have a quorum. Paulo's out there. Oh, okay. Well, Mike anyway, will not be here. The um, was that beginning to say the the uh, discussion of last fall that was too late to do anything about uh, that Brian brought up. I forget when he brought up about the compensation for the law director, the auditor, and the mayor. The, I think that comes back up again. It's a good time to begin for council to think about setting that way in advance uh, of your salaries and uh, the administrative salaries. Um, so, Is this the ordinance that Passes so that all the non bargaining can be. Yes, the Me Too yes. ordinance. But, okay, where I stepped on my toes last meeting. <laughs> yeah. Okay. yeah, that would just benefit. Yeah. Yeah. No, Anyways, no, we're, so that's all I got on that. The, it's, um, it, it will otherwise reflect the 5% that all the bargaining unit got, all the exempt employees, including your clerk. Yes. Oh, yes. Questions? We can ask some more Tuesday night if we have a motion to pass Ordinance 2023 12 on the full council. I'll make the motion to pass Ordinance 2023 12 to full council. Ms. Alt makes the motion. Mr. Bodkin seconds. All in favor? Aye. 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 Motion carries. Um, if there is no other business, I'd like a motion for adjournment of the Finance Committee meeting. Um, Mr. Bodkins makes the motion. I'll second. Ms. Alt seconds. All in favor? Okay. Um, meeting adjourned. Thank you. 728. Wow. You know.
Please don't do that. Get on, but then we encourage that. If you'll stand with me for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. A moment of silence, please. Ms. All. Here. Mr. Bodkins. Here. Ms. Durbin. Here. Dr. Fellner. Here. Ms. Frank. Here. Mr. Richard. Ms. Zier. Here. All right. We did hear from Mr. Richard. Um, he wasn't going to be here tonight. Does, can somebody uh, make a motion to excuse Mr. Richard? I make a motion to excuse Mr. Richard from tonight's meeting. All right. Motion being by Dr. Fellner, second by Ms. All. Uh, all paid? Aye. 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 All right. Uh, elected officials, please. Mayor Larry. Here. Auditor Satterfield. Director Law Palmer. Here. Treasurer Sparks. Safety Service Director Ward. Here. Thank you. And uh, there are a couple items on this agenda that needs to be added. A and B book. Yes, I'd like to make a motion to add Ordinance 2023-6 to the agenda. Motion to add 2023-6 to the agenda by Dr. Thomas, second by Ms. Durbin. Um, roll call. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Botkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Dr. Fellner? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Motion carried. I make a motion to add ordinance number 2023-7 to the agenda. Motion to add 2023-7 to the agenda by Ms. Alt, seconded by Ms. Zeger. Roll call, please. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Bodkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Dr. Fellner? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Thank you. Can I have a motion to approve the agenda as amended? Ms. Durbin? I'd like to make a motion to approve the agenda as amended. What we just did. As a minister. I'll check that out. Mr. Ms. Frank, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, very good. Okay. We'll start, uh, start with Ordinance 2023 6. Ordinance number 2023 6. Six. Entitled Ordinance Amending Ordinance Number 2023-4, authorizing Attorney Patrick Kaysen of Reming, Reminger Co. LPA to represent the City of Galleon as co-counsel in a pending litigation and to now authorize Mac Malone to do to, to do same and declare an emergency. Uh, members of Council, I can speak to this very quickly. Both this, let me just share really quickly, both this one and the next one are just sort of procedural matters uh, with a respectful request that these uh, be subject to a suspension of the rules and be passed uh, in, in, a, in a timely manner. Uh, the first one here is he already authorized Pat Kasson to represent the city in litigation. He was the attorney handed to, given to us by our insurance company. He is unable to do that. There is another attorney in his firm who is going to step into his stead to do that as a Ms. Mac Malone. This is simply authorizing him to do that instead of the one you've already approved. Same agency though. Same exact law firm. Okay. Is there a discussion? Sure. Oh, you're just, have you met him and I mean? I, I've met Pat Casson and I trust his judgment in selecting Mac. Okay. I've not met Mac. Um, but as you will see here, I'm, I will continue as co-counsel, so I have an oversight and the ability to gauge things as they go. I'm on. This, is, this one is uh, two moves away in a chess sense, or this issue, if it arises, if it happens and we utilize him, it, this is after uh, other things in the right. relatively near term. So think of this. This is um, related to that potential civil suit. Yeah, we had the discussion in executive session last year. We did. Yes, and the resulting ordinance that was passed. Mm -hmm. This is a change to that ordinance. Correct. We're substituting names. Correct. Yes. Not substituting firms, just substituting names. 
I would say if there's no other further discussion, I'd like to make a motion to um, just send a rules and move 2023-6 to a final reading. All right, motion to suspend the rules by Ms. Zeger, second by Mr. Botkins. Uh, Ms. Zeger? Yes. Mr. Botkins? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Dr. Fellner? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Ms. Alt? Yes. Motion carried. Dr. Fellner? Yes, I'd like to make a motion to pass ordinance 2023 6. Motion to pass 2023 6 by Dr. Fellner, second by Ms. Durbin. Do we have any further discussion? Roll call, please. Dr. Fellner? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Ms. Zeger? Yes. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Botkins? Yes. All right, motion carried. The next ordinance is Ordinance 2023-7. Oh, somebody ought to say something, right? Oh, she's got to read it. She has to read it. Oh. Yes, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, just, I'm oh. asleep. Oh. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> sorry, sorry. For both out of seat. Yeah, yep, yeah, I'm just okay. Ordinance number 2023-7 entitled Ordinance Authorizing Attorney Jeffrey Stan Kunis of Isaac Wilde and Burkholder LLC to assist and represent the city of Galleon regarding a civil service appeal and declaring an emergency. Mr. Uh, as the mayor sort of referred to a minute ago, the other one is dealing with something which is is as he as he shared a couple steps away. This is not this is it was extremely timely uh, in fact that's the reason for the special meeting uh, this will be it is relative to a uh, hearing for the civil service commission on the appeal uh, of the termination notice and uh, this will be taking place on monday so there literally was no time uh, the the appeal was filed at the end of december give or take a couple days and it is the nature of this that we've been moving at lightning speed trying to get everything in gear to be able to do this. Uh, Jess Sam Kunis is an experienced attorney with a, uh, a substantial amount of, of background in representation in civil service commission matters. Uh, this is not typical that we would do this, but because of the, the, the importance of this particular matter uh, and we want to build a record that upon appeal, if that happens to the common pleas, that there'll be a solid case that had been presented, and he has a substantial background in this area. Uh, the administration discussed this, and we thought it was the best idea to move forward with counsel. Um, I will share with you, we've already retained him in order to provide legal advice to the city and to my office. This is simply a permission for him to say that he's representing the city in the context of litigation, or in this case, the hearing before the Civil Service Commission. For him to do that, it just needs to be sort of a, a deputizing by city council. Yes, sir. Uh, is this covered under a liability policy or not? No. Dr. The hearing on Monday, uh, kind of a preliminary one, or is it? No, it is the, the hearing. hearing. Okay. It is the hearing. Right. We've already arranged the pay for this project, right? In other words, we've already done that. I, the, what he is currently the, working on the case. Oh, okay. yes. We are, okay. Through your budget, right? Through my budget. In my yeah. office, you've already authorized the expense. There's no additional money. It all is things you've already authorized my office. Okay, thanks, Ben. Dr. Um, I, if there are no other questions or comments, um, I would like to <clears throat> make a motion to suspend the rules on Ordinance 2023-7 and proceed to the final reading. Second, our motion to suspend the rules by Dr. Fellner, second by Ms. Durbin. Okay. Roll call, please. Dr. Fellner? Yes. Ms. Durbin? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. <clears throat> Ms. Eager? Yes. Ms. Alt? Yes. Mr. Botkins? Yes. Motion carried. Well, I'd like to um, move ordinance number 2023-7 to the final reading. We, just we did that. We want to pass it. That's okay. You do? Yeah, I, 
motion to suspend. I say that so. I'm sorry. I say that. Can I retract? <laughs> she seconded it. Why oh, yeah. you second? I'd like to make a motion to take ordinance 2023 7. Pass. 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 Is that the official or yeah? That would be fine. That would be fine. <laughs> so it <it's> fine. <laughs> then seconded by Ms. Zeger, I believe. He was the first to raise your hand. <laughs> All right, thank you for the good humor. Um, uh, any further discussion before we have roll call? If it matters, this guy's in the I'll make it quick. As you read it, that's a different law firm. There was a yes. discussion yes. about. We've used Clemens Nelson for so many things. There was discussion. They have lawyers that work in their HR firm that we would hire somebody at their recommendation. We thought, eh, you know, we're, the, we don't want to cast a shadow that that uh, that uh, we work independent on this. That the, this person, of course, they're going to agree with the findings of the investigator. So the investigator who does work for Clemens Nelson will be just asked to testify to the stuff that, that she learned as a part of the investigation. This lawyer who will represent us is, is, a, is totally independent. I think that's a good thing. Since I didn't say it, there was some good fortune, we'll see how it all works out, to be able to find somebody with the experience and qualification. The Civil Service Commission apparently hired the, the individual and firm that we had talked about so I'll well, let them get that first name, uh, you know, secured, and then uh, that that individual will be uh, advising the commission <coughs> at the hearing. So yeah, with this we'll be all ready to go. Okay, thanks. Thanks. That's good information. Thank yeah. you. Okay. Does anybody have anything else? Roll call, please. Ms. Durbin. Yes. Ms. Zeger. Yes. Ms. Alt. Yes. Mr. Botkins? Yes. Dr. Fellner? Yes. Ms. Frank? Yes. Thank you, Kerry. All right, he's right. Mr. Botkins? Aye. Mr. Botkins makes a motion to adjourn, seconded by Ms. Frank. All in favor? Aye. Any opposed? Seven more and five. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.